All right, welcome to another video with me, your host, Peter Draws, where we will be looking briefly at the recent activities of a 30-year-old man named Peter. He is me, but he's a past version of me, so I do set myself apart from him. This is a video sponsored by Squarespace. Let's take a look. All right, so here we see two days ago, Peter, setting up a drawing space and recording area in the kitchen of his house, which is admittedly a little ironic because did we not just see him several months ago move out of an apartment and into this house because, in part, he didn't want to have all this stuff set up in his kitchen? Well, I guess that's the luxury of choice because... Now he can choose to be in the kitchen when before that was his only choice. And I don't know, it is nice to mix up the scenery sometimes. Now, I mentioned Squarespace earlier, and I think it's important for me to mention that I do use Squarespace for my own website, and it works very well. I need to go and update my website with some of my more recent drawings, but I think I have a very convenient uh, like little drag-and-drop module there. It automatically updates a gallery with drawings from my Instagram page. So I'm more constantly updating my Instagram, but I don't have to worry about it too much because all those images automatically show up on my Squarespace page, right? PeterDraws.com. So go check it out if you want to see how I run my Square, Squarespace page. I have no experience with making websites or writing code or anything like that. So if I can do it, you can do it. I'm pretty dumb when it comes to that stuff, but it's still very easy. And uh, I believe in you. So go check it out. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws to get 10% off your first website or domain. All right, so for today's video, I want to address a question which both two days ago, Peter and I have been thinking about and we have not come to a consensus, but it is a combination of a physics question and a maybe like a car mechanics question. Uh, before I get into that, I do wanna say that this drawing, uh, it's in a moleskin sketchbook, I think and I used a 0.35 Rotring isograph with the Rotring ink that you can buy. So that's, that's what I have to say as far as art supplies and as far as inspiration for this drawing. Uh, I had just, I had been having like a few days of artist block, or I don't know if it's really artist block, maybe it's just like the type of block where you just, mm, I don't know, I was reading about how when you get into a flow state, it does take your mind, uh, some time to recuperate and so maybe I just had been flowing too much recently and just had to take a couple days off and now I'm back but I did go at it uh, pretty aggressively scribbly I am, am I am very surprised by how inspired I have been by watching my uh, machine arm draw I've done a couple of videos with it where it's it's, it's like a um mechanical plotter where I can put any pen into it. I don't know if you've seen any of those videos, uh, but basically, yeah, you put a pen in it and then you can feed it like images through the computer and it makes like little paths. But basically what I noticed is that it tries to optimize these paths and it doesn't pick up the pen very much. So it makes like long squiggly lines and piles them up on top of each other and it makes an image, right? And I've found myself drawing in a way lately where I also don't pick up the pen as much as I used to. I make a lot more um, like jumbled up collections of longer squiggly lines. I leave the pen pen on the paper. Anyway, so just, that's just a couple of thoughts about the the drawing. Also, I think it kind of the end result kind of looks like uh, well, it's supposed to look a little bit mechanical, like some weird space station you could dock in. But when you sit back a little bit, I think it almost looks like a maybe like a splintered tree, which I think is interesting. I try to make it look mechanical, but it almost looks a little bit organic. That's interesting, to me at least. Um, uh, there's more I could say about that. But here's my other question, okay? I, uh, well, Peter, two days ago, Peter noticed even many more days ago. I guess it was a different version of me. Anyways, the low 
the I don't know what the a light came on in my car dashboard, the low tire air pressure, right? And it's the first car I've ever had uh that has had such such technology that could sense when its own tire air pressure is low. Basically, I think this is just because cold weather arrived and that makes the the car think that you know, the well I guess the, the, I guess the tire pressure is actually lower. I don't think that there's a leak in my tires. Uh, I think this is proven a little bit. I don't know if it's actually proof, but when the cold weather arrived, I noticed that all the air, the air pumps at the gas stations around town, which usually previously were empty, now suddenly had three or four cars lined up around them all the time because I'm assuming other people also had cars uh, in which they're low tire air pressure lights came on and so that everyone lined up to go pump up their tires again, right? But me, I'm thinking, assuming there's not actually a hole in my tires, there's not a leak, there's the same number of air molecules in my tires, would I be silly to pump up my tires, right? And then when warm weather comes around again, would there be too much air in my tires? Would they be overinflated? It got more and more complicated the more I thought about what was going on in my tires. I thought it was a simple thing, but I mean, first of all, right, air isn't just air. There's like a bunch of different things. I think it's like mostly almost 80% nitrogen, right? But we breathe, it's like 20, around 20% oxygen. Uh, then there's some other like trace elements and stuff. There's some carbon dioxide in there. I think the plants breathe carbon dioxide, but only a very, I'm surprised the. I don't think the plants need very much. If the plants really breathe carbon dioxide, I'm pretty surprised because I looked it up and air is only 0.04% carbon dioxide. Is that surprising to anyone else? I guess it's a very delicate, uh, balance. Even a bigger percentage of air is uh, water vapor. It says it's about 1% water vapor. Anyways, so um, basically, I'm assuming, I don't know, look, I have a very limited knowledge of like physics. So I'm assuming that what, th there's two things that could give my tires pressure. One is temperature, aka like how fast and furious the various molecules are bouncing around inside the tire, right? Maybe they're hitting each other or hitting the walls of the tire. That's how it works, right? Or the other factor could be how many molecules there are. So you could increase the pressure by increasing the heat or pumping more air in there, right? So I'm thinking that if we added more, if I, if I, if I added more air right now to make my sensor go off, I will note that they don't, they don't look visibly deflated. So I'm, I've still been driving around. I'm, I'm, I mean, it probably lowers my fuel economy a little bit, right? If they're a little bit deflated, but I'm guessing, look, if I add more air right now, and then it gets warmer once spring and summer comes around again, and so the heat goes back up, will my tires be overinflated? What do you think? I don't know. Also, the corollary to it getting, I don't know if I don't know if I use that word corollary, right? Anyways, the flip side, all right? Uh, the obverse. If it keeps getting colder, right, the, the molecules will, um, they will chill out, right? They'll stop being so active. If it keeps getting colder, will my tires eventually deflate all the way? Dis like if it gets down to absolute zero, right? Is that zero degrees Kelvin? Will my tires look completely deflated, even though there's the same amount of air in there? That's a weird concept to me. Is that right or wrong? It'll look like my tires are completely flat, even though there's the same amount of air in there. I mean, I don't think, I don't think absolute zero is even possible, right? But, uh, I mean, just imagine, I, I don't know, they probably don't even use... Do they use tires at places where it gets down to like negative 40? I know there's places in the world where it gets really, really, really cold. They must have to put so much 
air in their tires. They probably just use like tank treads and stuff like that. So they don't have to put air because they would have to put so much air in, in their tires because the, the molecules would be so sluggish, right? I don't know. I'm just trying to think through it. But that's so weird to me to imagine the air in a tire at absolute zero. And then what would the molecules do? Would they just all be like lying at the bottom, lying dormant at the bottom of a tire? And here's my other question. At normal temperatures, this is my, now I'm, I'm hoping that some people will correct me here because I feel like my knowledge of this must be flawed somehow, some, somehow because I'm imagining the molecules flying around. I, like, I, like I saw a diagram in a physics textbook once or something, like the molecules are flying around, hitting stuff, creating pressure, right? Because they've got energy or something. They've got heat that creates pressure or the like the, Illusion of pressure? Is it an illusion? I don't know. But what are they flying through? Just like empty space? So I don't know. How does that even work? Is there something? So like if I move my hand through the air, it's not really moving through empty space because there's air molecules there. But the molecules themselves, are those moving through actual empty space? Is there any such thing as actual empty space? I don't know. Anyways, I don't know what my ultimate, I don't know what my actual question there was. Oh yeah, should I add air if it's just gonna get warm again? And should I add air to my tires if it's just gonna get warm again and my tires don't look noticeably flat? Cause they might be overinflated once the weather gets warm again. What do you think? All right. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.